Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Last night, I did something that I don't normally do. I spent more than 30 seconds on Facebook. I was looking at some photography pages and groups, and in one group, a uh, conversation caught my interest. Uh, they were talking about what the best post-processing software was for wildlife photography. And a few of the members uh, thought that Capture One was by far the best. I don't necessarily disagree with them. I thought it would make a great video if I demonstrated to you my workflow using Capture One on a wildlife image. We're going to be doing a very simple wildlife image, this image here. I actually had two I was contemplating on doing this video with, either this image or this image. And I chose this image because I think it just needs a little more work. There's a sensor spot there and just going to require a little more uh, post-processing. So I thought this would be a better image. Also, I use uh, Topaz Denoise AI for noise reduction. And I want to demonstrate how to use a plugin, any plugin. In this case, it's going to be a plugin for noise reduction with Capture One. I prefer Topaz Labs Denoise AI because I think it's the best. It does the best job on reducing noise. And a lot of times with wildlife images, we're shooting at higher ISOs. And with uh, Denoise AI, you'll be able to shoot at really high ISOs and really not lose any um, sharpness in your image once you remove the noise. So we're going to demonstrate that. Now, as you look at Capture One on my computer, it's laid out different than the default workspace. And in the description below this video, I'll have a link to Capture One, I'll have a link to Denoise and all those links. But what you'll see is if you have not used Capture One before and you download their fully working free trial, that it's not going to look like this. So I'm going to change my workspace uh, to what it will look like if you download it. So I'm going to go to Window, Workspace, and I'm going to go to the default workspace. I do have a video on how to uh, create your own workspace, uh, like I just showed you my, my custom workspace. Um, I'll have that video linked in the description below this video and in the top right hand corner a little flag will pop out if you're interested in creating your own custom workspace in Capture One. Now I'm not used to the default workspace so you're going to have to cut me a little slack if I start searching for things that I need to do on the left hand side because it's laid out totally different than mine. Now. Uh, first of all, this browser over here on the right with the images, I don't need to see that. So I'm going to hide that. I'm going to go up to View, down to Customize Browser, Auto Hide Mode. So it's just going to give us a little more room here. Now, because I use an external program to remove noise, I have to do specific things to the RAW file before I send it over to that noise reduction program and just as importantly there's some things I shouldn't do until I reduce noise specifically I shouldn't do anything that increases contrast or increases sharpness or really increases the saturation either so I should save those until after the noise is reduced but I do need to do some things before specifically if I want to edit the white balance at all I should do that now because white balance will be more effective on the raw file than it will be on the image after it comes back from the noise reduction software. In this case, white balance is fine. The other thing I should be concerned about is a profile that is in base characteristics in Capture One. And you can see that it's showing an ICC profile Nik Nikon D500. That's what I shot with. I'll have all the gear and settings in the description below the video as well. But I, if I want to do a different uh, profile, I should do that now as well because that has to be done to the raw file. In this case, I could go with the generic or the flat. Um, I'm just going to go with the generic, right? That's fine. Or maybe we could go with flat. Let's go with flat. D D500 flat. That's fine. Um, because noise reduction is more effective on an image that doesn't have a lot of contrast or a lot of sharpness. So this flat obviously does not have either. So we've done that. 
The other thing then you probably want to do is just some basic uh, highlights and shadows adjustments. And what you want to do really is just make the image a little flatter and try to recover any detail in the extreme brighter areas or the extreme darker areas because it's more effective on the raw file to recover that, uh, that data in those really dark or really bright areas. So uh, to do that, we're going to go over here uh, to this tab, which is, I forgot what that tab's called, but this tab. And then, like I mentioned, my workspace is totally different. And we're going to close down that. We'll close down exposure. We're going to go to high dynamic range. We're just going to open up the shadows enough so I could see some detail in the darkest part of the bird's feathers right in here. And you could see that. So double click with the little hand tool and you'll zoom in. All right. And then uh, highlights, uh, the brightest part of the feathers are right in here. And I want to go to highlights and bring that down just enough so I see some detail there as well. So I see detail there uh, now. So I think that looks good. Maybe just a touch more. All right. So I adjusted the highlights, the shadows, and really that's all I've done to this image uh, besides the profile. So I don't really need to worry about that. Now, typically, I like to crop early in my workflow, too. But if you're using an external application for noise reduction, they work better no matter what the application is. This isn't unique to Topaz to Noise AI. It's, uh, any of them work better if you send as many pixels as possible. So I'm not going to crop yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, remove this sensor spot right here. So to do that, we're going to go up to the top in the tool well and see this little healing mask little band-aid if I long press with the left mouse button there I'm gonna to go to remove spot so now we have a spot removal tool and if I right click you can see the attributes and we have two different types of spot removal tools we have spot or dust I'm gonna use spot and I'm gonna get a tool that is just big enough to cover that um, that spot and we're just gonna click once right on it and it removed the spot now we'll go back to the hand tool. I'll hit the H key on the keyboard as the keyboard shortcut to go to back to the hand tool. You can see I removed that. So now actually I'm ready to do something with noise. Now just to be very specific, this image was only shot with an ISO of 400. And if I zoom in, and zoom in actually a lot, there's not a ton of noise. And to tell you the truth, the Capture One noise reduction um, tool would probably be good enough for this image. But... In many cases, as I mentioned at the top, uh, with wildlife images, you're shooting at extremely high ISO, 1600, 3200, 6400. And the noise reduction tool in Capture One and in most post-processing applications, in my opinion, just isn't good enough. The noise AI is much better. So we're gonna use that. Now to send this to that external application, we need to go to Image, Edit With, now, because I've used it before, it's showing up right here, Topaz Denoise AI, because I used it as a plugin. By default, it doesn't, when you install Denoise AI, it doesn't install itself as a plugin on Capture One or in Capture One. So you're going to have to go to Other. If you have a Mac, a Finder window will open up. If you have a PC, a File Explorer will open up. You'll have to go to your applications and search for it and pick it that way. But once you do that, the first time it will now then always show up under edit with oops I disappeared after I did that so that's all right we'll go to other we'll go to applications I'm just gonna search for denoise AI there it is right there click on it and click open now it's going to ask what do you want to send over well we're gonna send over a TIFF uncompressed Adobe RGB is fine we're gonna keep these default settings go to adjustments Make sure that no output sharpening is being done. And then you have control what metadata. I'm going to send all the metadata over. And so just like that, we're going to click on edit variants. And when I do that, Capture One is really going to create a TIFF file from this raw file. And it's going to send that TIFF file over into Denoise AI. Now, this isn't a demonstration or a tutorial on Denoise AI. So I'm just going to do um, auto detect settings. All right, and we'll click on update up here and let it do its thing. And you'll see that it does a great job of removing noise without uh, blurring out any detail. And once it generates the preview, you see that. And then once it does that, I'll just click save image. I'm not going to play around with it. 
to try to make it the best possible because that's not the point of this tutorial. But we'll let it do this thing real quick here. And da, da, da. and there it is. So there's uh, before and there's after. So it, it got rid of the noise and you could see how it even increased detail. There's before, look at the bird's eye area and then after. See how it just is an awesome program. So we're gonna just click on save image and now it's going to take every pixel of this TIFF file and apply the noise reduction as specified over here on the right hand side to it and it's going to reopen in um, capture one and we'll return once it reopens. Okay we've returned from Denoise AI and we're back in capture one but by default capture one won't be on the image that we just sent to Denoise AI it's still on the original raw file so you need to go over to the browser and you need to find that TIFF file and click on it so that we're now uh, have that active and we're going to continue our work here. This is the image that um, has the noise removed. Now at this point I'm going to crop because as I mentioned I'd like to crop relatively early in my workflow so we'll uh, click that crop tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the original um, the original uh, aspect ratio and I'm just going to grab this corner over here and I'm going to tighten it up quite a bit I'm going to bring it so that top horizontal rule of thirds line is going right through the great blue herring's eye so that it is just like that. And then I'll go back to the hand tool to accept the crop. Now we have this very flat image so what I want to do next is reintroduce the contrast and to do that um, what I like to use is levels. You could also do that with high dynamic range with the white and black slider or the exposure section with the contrast slider. Personally, I prefer levels. Go to this far left bottom and move this to left and we'll make the darker parts a little darker. Go over here to the far right and we'll make the brighter parts a little brighter. So we're in reintroducing contrast that we wiped out before we sent it over to the noise reduction software. So I kind of like that. Now I just want to add a little bit of saturation. Um, I strongly suggest that if you're working on a wildlife image, you don't do anything that misrepresents that wildlife. So in this case, in this bird, I won't do anything that's going to make the iris of the eye like uh, super saturated because it wasn't or make the beak of the bird more saturated. Just a general overall saturation will bring that up just a little bit. So you don't want to Basically, what I'm trying to say is you don't want to uh, go to, let's say, um, the color editor and start really increasing the yellows and the oranges or anything like that to misrepresent what that bird in this case looked like. In my opinion, you shouldn't do that. Uh, so we're going to go with that uh, so far. So good. And we cropped it. I did that. Um, what else do I want to do? I think almost done really I can't um, think of much else um, go to vignetting and we'll add a little bit of a dark vignette oh you know what I'm gonna do after that is generally speaking though because this was dappled light you could see that you know there's light here and then it's a little darker in here uh, this is the money area like people are gonna look at the eye of the bird so I'm just gonna brighten that up a little bit without misrepresenting what the bird look like I just want to make it a little brighter so what we're gonna do there is we're gonna go to layers and we're gonna add an adjustment layer with a brush a mask brush so we're gonna draw a mask basically and if I right click you'll get the brush attributes and I want as soft a brush as possible um, opacity and flow both at a hundred uh, we're going to use auto mask so wherever I initially click is where it will look at those pixels to draw the mask and I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key the right bracket key makes it larger and we'll come in here and brighten this up in here brighten up in here and brighten up in here get a smaller brush brighten up the beak a little bit I don't want to brighten up the white feathers necessarily so I'll try to avoid those I'm just brighten up the beak in areas there so I'm just painting the mask at this point I'm not actually doing anything it's not adjusting anything 
Um, as you see, nothing is changing. So as I click with the left mouse button, you see the mask temporarily shows up. All right, so I have this area there. And if you look over at the layers, you can see there's an adjustment layer. Now it's only whatever adjustments I do will only go exactly where I painted. So we're going to go to exposure and we're going to take exposure up. And you can see how it's brightening up that area. That's all I want to do, just like that. And it just doesn't misrepresent what the bird looks like. It just brightens up that area. So when people look at it, it's just a little more interesting. They could see a little more detail and, and that. And if I wanted to add to this area, I could, um, I could just get a, you know, move the uh, right bracket key and I could add to the mask if I wanted to like that. And I didn't necessarily want to, but I wanted to show you that. You can see how it made that brighter. I'm going to undo that by hitting command Z on my Mac, control Z on your PC. And you can see, and I'd say this image is done. I'll go back to the hand tool. I'll hit the H key. And um, overall, I'll do a before after. Now this is the before after the TIFF file. So this is after I did the, um, the highlights and shadows adjustment and the noise reduction. So there's before and there's after, before, after. So you can see it doesn't take a lot to really process an image uh, from beginning to end in Capture One. If I wasn't demonstrating this technique and talking, I could have did this in just a few minutes. Uh, so Capture One is very effective at processing wildlife images. Now, granted, this was a very, very simple wildlife image. There, it didn't really need a lot of work. If you'd like me to do a more complex wildlife image, let me know in the comments below. Now remember in, in the description below the video, I'll have links to Topaz, Labs Denoise. I have a discount code for them. I have uh, links to Capture One. Both companies have fully working uh, free trials that you could try out and see if the, it would be actually something you'd use. I'll also have links to my playlist on how to use Denoise and how to customize the workspace in Capture One. I'll have all that in the description below this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.